from there, I want to show you guys the rebuild kit. Moving to the internals, we're looking at a ceramic ball. You got a, like a pin size spring in there and then a little O-ring. Those are nestled nicely underneath this barb inside the body. Lastly, is going to be an orifice. They're located on the inside. You can easily remove the orifice with the Allen head key. The orifice is going to be this bad dude right here. It's going to, it's what creates the vacuum of the injector. So this is going to be your orifice here. If you notice real close, these particular orifices are going to have numbers on them. Those numbers play important for this super sud sucker because this bad dude, going back to the rule where I was talking about flow and you're, you know, you want to get the right size injector for your machine, this injector is built for all sizes. You're going to get a little baggy with different orifices so you can change that orifice based on the volume machine you're running. Now kind of to back step a little bit, these bad dudes work off of what's called a Venturi effect. So they're only going to draw soap with a low pressure nozzle. So if you're running a high pressure nozzle, it's going to create back pressure on the injector and it's not going to allow it to pull soap. So the best way to describe a Venturi effect is if you're walking downtown, you get in between two buildings and you feel that hard gust of wind trying to suck you between them and you get past that alley and you're like, whoa, that was crazy. That is a Venturi effect. That's that suction trying to draw you. These are plumbed out chemical injectors or downstreamers. So we've followed our arrows. We want our water coming into a socket, coming out of a plug. That's how we send all of our units out. So they all look identical. If you buy a machine brand new, you're going to get an injector that comes with your machine. That injector typically is going to have a stainless steel ball in it. This is one that comes with a new unit. It will pull chem. Um, if you're jumping straight into, you know, pulling SH or sodium hypochlorite, it's not the best injector for that. It's going to have a stainless steel ball in there that that bleach will attack. So it's good to get by in a pinch, but not best for longevity. I encourage you to use this injector for car soaps, degreasers, you know, anything that, uh, that's not bleach. These here are gonna have a ceramic ball. So it's called an acid kit. Sometimes the injectors will be named a chemical injector with an acid kit. That acid kit, all it's meaning is it's gonna have a ceramic ball bearing that's gonna hold up to that bleach. This contrapment here is called a chemical bypass loop. So we got everything on a quick connect setup. So what typically happens is sometimes this little ball will get lodged into your barb and then you're not pulling chem. You're like, hey, I've got everything proper. It's stop pulling. And you're in, it's the end of the day and you don't wanna stop. So you'll wanna be able to have this in a way where you can shut the machine off, pop this off, pop on a new injector and get right back to work. Um, so I frown upon having these hard plumbed into your line because if that happens, then you're, yeah, you're wrenching out in the field. It's slowing you down. All right, guys, so this is the chemical bypass loop. Our flow's coming in, going straight through, hitting our trigger. We're ready to apply chemical. So ideally your injector's gonna come right in here. Remember, we always want to follow our flow arrows. So remember, water's coming in. When I'm ready to pull chem now, I'll close my ball valve. So it's going to create a blockage. Water can't go there. It's got to hit this injector. And now I'm pulling chem. This is really good because I don't want to have to stop, stop my machine to pull this out. So when I go back to water, I can just open the flow up. Water's going to bypass the injector and go straight for full flow. This is important because if you're running a high flow machine, eight, 10 gallons a minute, we don't always want our flow restricted by this, in, 
this orifice, especially if we're trying to achieve distance. You know, if you're trying to hit a dirt dobbler 60 feet up in the air, we want a little bit more pressure and we want that full flow. So any restriction back on the pump is going to affect that distance. So having a way that you can simply go to your rig and turn a ball valve and achieve that distance is really nice. So we encourage the bi chemical bypass loops. This also helps the life of the injector. If you're running six hours a day and you're not having a bypass loop and this injector's plugged in nonstop, you know, it's, it's constantly working when it doesn't need to. Well, that wraps up our segment on all things chemical injectors. If you learned something from these videos, would you consider subscribing to the channel? That really does help us out more than you know. Stay tuned in the weeks ahead as we continue to release lots of content on all things pressure washing.